I'm Katrina Perry in Washington and this is BBC World News America. Niger coup leaders have closed the nation's airspace as leaders in neighbouring regions prepare to convene to find a solution to the crisis. A plot to assassinate Ukraine's president is thwarted as Russian missiles strike eastern Ukraine. And dramatic video of the moment a home in Alaska was swept away by glaciers are to blame. Welcome to World News America. We begin with a major political crisis in West Africa, which continues to unfold after last month's military coup in Niger. Military leaders there have closed the country's airspace, citing the threat of a foreign military intervention. They say they're ready to defend themselves, claiming they have information that a foreign power is preparing to attack. OK, well, we'll leave it there for the moment. Chairman Mike Thanks. Turner, thank you for joining us. At least five people have been killed in a Russian, Rus Russian missile attack on residential buildings in the eastern Ukrainian town of Pokrovsk. Ukraine's interior minister reported that the strikes also injured at least 31 people. Among the injured are at least 19 police officers, five rescuers and a child. And as you just heard, Ukraine's intelligence agency announced it arrested a woman in connection with an alleged assassination plot against the Ukrainian president, Volodymyr Zelensky. The woman was allegedly preparing a Russian airstrike in the Mykolaiv region during Mr. Lens Zelensky's visit to the area. Our Ukraine correspondent James Waterhouse has the latest. Extreme weather continues with both heat and floods impacting different regions around the world. Take a look at this house collapsing into a river in Alaska. It fell after a record of almost 15 feet or about four and a half meters of glacial flooding in the city of Juneau. The previous record? about 12 feet or 3.6 meters, which was back in July 2016. Now to Cambodia, where one of the world's longest serving leaders, Hun Sen, has handed over power to his son, Hun Manet. He was appointed prime minister by Cambodia's king. Hun Sen made the announcement after a landslide election victory in July. Our Southeast Asia correspondent, Jonathan Head, looks at the new prime minister's background. Part of Hun Manet's Western education was here in the U.S. at West Point. Now to some other news. In the U.S., a former Minneapolis police officer has been sentenced to nearly five years in prison for his role in the death of George Floyd. The ex-officer Tu Thao held bystanders away while another ex-officer knelt on Floyd's neck for nine and a half minutes in May 2020. Thao was found guilty of aiding and abetting manslaughter in May of this year. On Sunday, the once dominant US trucking company Yellow filed for bankruptcy. The filing from the 100-year-old company puts about 30,000 workers at risk. Yellow said it expects to reach an agreement with its creditors that will allow it to pay certain wages and benefits. William Friedkin, the director of the classic horror film The Exorcist, died on Monday. Friedkin's nearly 60-year career began with the musical comedy Good Times. He then spent the rest of his career creating some of the most disturbing, violent and controversial images in film history. History is set to be made this week in New Mexico when a teen and her mom go to space. They'll also be the first people from the Caribbean to make the journey. And they won the voyage in a competition. Louise Hosey reports. You can find more on all the day's news at our website, bbcnews.com. You can, of course, also follow BBC News on your favourite social media apps as well. I'm Katrina Perry. Thank you for watching World News America. Do take care. Hello, a potent area of 